Get ready, it's our annual year in review edition of the program. Faithfully discharge the duties of governor. I will not be a candidate in 2020 for a fifth Senate term. No interest in being a senator from Kansas. <laughs> I love doing what I'm doing. Today, many gathered at the Nelson Atkins Museum to say goodbye to a Kansas City legend, Henry Block. This office has reviewed all the evidence compiled and has declined to file charges against Tyreek Hill. We didn't get the outcome we wanted tonight. What an amazing night in Kansas City. An innocent bystander dies as gunshots break out during First Friday. In the I said it before and I'll say it again. Our city should not accept this violence. We want to start here with some breaking news. A Shooting at a Kansas City bar overnight, leaving four people dead. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly says the border war with Missouri is over. We'll be the first larger metropolitan city in the U.S. with free public transit. Kansas City star headlines don't always go national. It has 120 year history of being the Paseo. That's a lot of address change. Dead right now! There is some mistake here. There's no, uh, no real, uh, way to say everything's going to be accurate. It's a city at war. It's a county at war with its own residents. This is not the county against our taxpayers. The work of art is in the road. So this is what you're calling the most Instagrammable moment in Kansas City. The Kansas City T-Bones are out. Wyandotte County's unified government says it's evicting the team for not paying their bills. A $1 billion question hangs over Kaufman Stadium tonight. The team's owner negotiating selling the team for $1 billion. Mahomes magic. I don't know if the cereal's good or not, but it's got Patrick Mahomes on the box. I have to have a box. Week in Review is made possible through the generous support of Dave and Jamie Cummings, Bob and Marlee Sporley, Smithfield Foods, Haas and Wilkerson Insurance, the Courtney S. Turner Charitable Trust, John H. Mize and Bank of America N.A. co-trustees, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome everyone, I'm Nick Haynes. Get ready for Laughter Tears' astonishing insight as we pour through the biggest, the greatest, the worst and most painful moments of 2019 and we gaze into our crystal ball to take a look at what we can expect together in 2020 in this place we call home. With us on this holiday edition of the program, she is 50% of Dana and Parks on KMBZ, Dana Wright. Across town, Steve Kraske sits behind another microphone keeping you up to date weekdays at 11 on KCUR. Whenever important local news is happening, you can expect expect Kansas City Star columnist and editorial writer Dave Helling to be in the middle of the action and also around the cozy confines of your Yuletide table from the call newspaper senior writer Eric Wesson and thank you to Eric Wesson for our gifts we're all wearing our Eric Wesson neckwear oh, you're in all a wearing? festive fashion well we didn't think you'd want one I okay. mean all righty all righty I'm She's sorry you're list. being left where's out. my time all right <laughs> Steve Kraske we begin with a multiple choice question yes, for you I've all the stories making news in Kansas City over this past year, which story had the greatest impact on our metro? And there's lots of candidates. This has been one of the deadliest years on record in Kansas City. It's the year that saw Quinton Lucas become our new mayor. Mahomes mania never stopped. And the Jackson County property assessment mess seems to take up an enormous amount of news coverage. And we can't forget it was the year that the Royals went up for sale. Was one of those your pick or something completely different? It was one of those things, Nick. And could it be anything other than Mahomes mania? He is on every TV channel and every ad every time you look at the boob tube there he is uh, he had a great year last year he had a very good year this year Mahomes mania and, and it's certainly one of the few issues that brings the community together Absolutely, right without any question okay Dana Wright who did you have well, well, for the most impactful story of the you, year you are right in that my cousin comes in from Mississippi and the first thing she says to me is do you think we'll run into Patrick Mahomes and I go no I, <laughs> well, I, I don't the street I don't think corner, we're gonna right? run into him and I would love to pick a happy story but if you really look at what is impacting everyone in the metro and not necessarily in a good way I think you have to go with the homicide problem and the gun violence problem in Kansas City. I'm going to quote your reporting here, Steve Kraske, the uh, number of people in jail for non-fatal shootings uh, through 2017, 2018, 2019, look that up. It is astounding. It is zero or close to zero. We have got to get a handle on that problem because even when my relatives come in from other places, they ask about Patrick Mahomes, but they also say, are we safe here? I've heard this is a dangerous Amen place. Uh, that's Eric Wesson, most impactful story of 2019. 
The assessment, the Jackson County tax assessment, it, it affects a lot of people. The lawsuit that was filed yesterday, is I, I think it's just symbolic, but I think it's going to get down to the nuts and bolts of what the real problems are in Jackson County assessments. Dave. I think the most long-term impactful story this year was free bus transit, which I think the city will implement next year. Uh, not because it will work necessarily or won't work, Nick, we'll find that out. The reason, by the way, they're thinking about it is because so few people ride the bus today, that's why they can do it. But ultimately, transit will be an extraordinarily important thing in Kansas City, and if this can work, it will transform, I think, our attitudes about getting people from point A to point B. Dana Wright complete this sentence. The news story Kansas City would most like to forget in 2019 was blank. Uh, I chose the allegations against Tyreek Hill and the ongoing issue with domestic violence and the NFL overall. There was a ton of reporting on that. I yes. think it brought out the worst in just about everybody. Uh, the focus somehow shifted between the safety of those children and the situation at hand into a football conversation, and I think the NFL has to get a better handle how they're going to uh, take care of those Steve, issues. I said anything, absolutely anything that has to do with Jackson County, Missouri, Nick. They messed <laughs> up the jail, they messed up assessments. The former county executive uh, spent the year in prison, Nick. So Jackson County, take it off the map. People want to rename it. it. Nothing's going right in Jackson County. Eric, what did you put down? I put down the city jail. Kansas City transferring their people into the county jail and then into another facility. It was a mess, and now they're figuring out how to send some of those people back to the county jail. The story you most <laughs> wanted to forget in 2019? Uh, I wrote down the uh, first Friday shooting, uh, mm. the killing earlier this year, Aaron Langhofer, who died so tragically. I know a lot of people suggested we paid too much attention because she was a suburban a woman. She'd come down for first Friday, but the reality is that that incident ruined her, two lives. It took hers, but it also ruined the shooter's life. And the idea that someone would bring a gun to an event like First Fridays is just appalling, and it suggests that Dana is right. That's a problem we really need to fix in the new year. Eric Wesson, a multiple choice question for you. Time Magazine picked young climate activist Greta Thunberg as its person of the year. If you were picking the person of the year for our area, who would you be choosing? Would it be the man no one could stop talking about, Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes? Was it our new mayor or the new owner of the Royals, John Sherman? Or the man who, regardless of how many times he was asked, refused to ever say the word yes, Mike Pompeo? <laughs> or was it the head of one of our Metro's most potent grassroots movements, Tara Ragavia, the director of KC Tenants? Or did you pick someone completely different? I picked the mayor. I think he's done a job in marketing himself. He takes a lot of pictures. It looks like he's got a twin because he's everywhere. He at the is same everywhere. Time. Yeah. So I, I picked him. He's got a lot of energy, and I just hope that equates to something tangible. Dave. I picked David Glass, the outgoing oh. owner of the Kansas City Royals. Um, I know he made a bajillion dollars in his investment <laughs> with the team, and his stewardship was not perfect, although we did win, of course, a World Series. But baseball was really in danger in Kansas City when he took control of that club. That's not well uh, w uh, greatly understood. So his decision to buy the team, keep it here, was uh, really important, and we should honor him as he leaves the scene. Steve. In addition, his decision to make sure that local owners uh, remained here Correct. in town. Correct. You know, I picked somebody completely different, Nick. Uh, I picked Dennis Carpenter, the former school mm. superintendent in Lee mm. Summit, for his courageous stand on sticking with the idea of teaching uh, equity, uh, equity training in Lee Summit, this idea of teaching uh, teachers how to be more sensitive to students of different colors in Lee Summit. He was run out of town mm -hmm. for that very courageous stand. It was not Lee Summit, uh, its best moment in the spot. Dana Wright, your newsmaker was who? I picked a happy person with Patrick Mahomes for that one, but I want an honorable mention for Gary Woodland, the PGA golfer who has represented the state of Kansas brilliantly and lovely and what a fun guy to watch from my hometown. 
Topeka, Kansas. Which is now asking people, you know, giving $50,000 a year <laughs> That's for people story. to move there. All right. <laughs> Dan Helling, fill in this uh, blank for us. The biggest winner in Kansas City this year is blank. Uh, by the way, that's $15,000 or an autographed picture of Dan <laughs> okay. All right. Either one, your okay. choice. Okay. Now, the biggest winner in Kansas City this year was obviously the rich developer community who are getting handouts at City Hall like there's no tomorrow. I'm going to name some of them. John <laughs> Kopek and Ron Jury, David Francais, Jim Bowers, John Stevens, Tim Cowden, all of them surrounding this eco-development uh, uh, onslaught at City Hall. Kansas City in the last four or five months has handed out, uh, and the state, $180 million in incentives to big downtown developers. They're obviously the winners. The biggest winner and for by you, the way, <laughs> And by the way, they won at the ballot box, too, uh, when the idea of limiting those incentives was defeated. Uh, two big winners, uh, Waddell and Reed, to take you back on Dave, $35 million in local incentives, $62 million in incentives uh, from the state. Uh, that's a lot of money. They came out looking very good. But I also picked somebody else, Tara Ragovir, uh, who heads KC Tenants. You know, she had has taken the issue of a housing and affordable housing from nowhere land to the top of the heap in Kansas City, Missouri. Yes. A tremendous effort on her in part. In such a short period of time. In a very short period of Dana. time. Dana. You know, it's interesting you brought that up. I had a girlfriend looking for a home recently, and she said the number one thing she needed, it needed to be on the bus line. I chose anyone who needs transit. Transit is huge, as you mentioned. I think if you live out in the suburbs and we all drive everywhere, you don't think about how important that is for so many people in our community. It's a huge win for people who will use that service. Eric. I had the KC Tenants Group. Uh, they were able to maneuver through the city council, get one side of a story told, the side that they wanted told. I have them as the biggest one. We're lifting the hood, by the way, on that whole uh, issue of housing on January 2nd, Thursday night at 7.30 here on KCPT with an hour-long special, including folks <coughs> from KC Tenants. Uh, Steve Kraske, complete yes, this sir. sentence, if you would, with the name of an individual, a group, an issue, or an institution. The biggest loser in Kansas City in 2019 was blank. Nick, poor Missourians. Uh, Missouri took 100,000 people off the Medicaid rule, uh, rolls this year. Uh, you, you have to be really poor to even qualify for Medicaid. Only 22% of the federal poverty rate, that, that gets you qualified for Medicaid. One in 17 states, Missouri is, that hasn't expanded Medicaid this year. It's tough, damn tough to be poor in Missouri. Nick. Dana. You know, um, it breaks my heart to say the Kansas City, Missouri Public School District, they were caught. Some employees falsifying attendance data. It is just one more mark against a school district that does employ people who work very hard every day for those children. The biggest loser, Eric? Tenants. Even though the Tenant Association won, I think in the long run, the big so the slow game is going to be tenants. I think you're going to find that you're going to have a lot of housing problems because uh, property owners will start selling their properties or they start fighting back in other ways, raising the rent. I think it's going to be in the long game. I think they're going to be the biggest losers. I, I, we're about 48 percent of Kansas City, Missouri residents are due rent, which is actually much higher than the national average. So there is a big issue there. And Hilltop is getting ready to close January the 1st. 500 people are going to be homeless out of that housing project. Where are they going to go? Dave. Uh, Sly James was the biggest loser this year. He lost the pre-K election, which he had put a lot of uh, political capital in. He lost the mayoral election. His hand-picked successor, Jolie Justice, was not only defeated but crushed at the polls. And the mayor wrote a memoir with me in it. That was a loser decision <laughs> uh, from the beginning. So for those three reasons, Sly James was the big loser. Well, actually, it's gift-wrapped. It's gift-wrapped <laughs> copies of that book that we've given to guests that you see in these boxes on our table. Dana Wright, I fill in the blank question for you. The most over-reported story in our metro in 2019 was blank. Uh, over-reported story. Um, I can come back to you. Come back to me because I want to talk about my underreporting. I'm going to come back to you, Eric. The most underreported story. This is the overreported. <laughs> overreported. <laughs> story. Yes, overreported story. Overreported story. I would have to say was crime. Okay, so we're reporting on it, and it's constantly a conversation. What are we doing about it? What's the vision? What's the plan? Okay, Dave? Well, we can retire the overreported trophy this year because the status of Mike Pompeo yes, as a Senate good. candidate yes, okay. was over 
Oh, every time the guy yes. blows sure. his nose, no. suddenly is he running? Is yep. he isn't yep. running? We'll know. We'll yep. know in 2020 whether he's a candidate and can react at that point. Until then, we ought to let him make his decision. That was a good one. Any story, Nick, that talked about the very real possibility, supposed real possibility, that the Missouri General Assembly will consider and pass new gun legislation this year, that is not, not going to happen. happen. There were a lot of stories um, yes, that uh, uh, legislature is too conservative. The NRA is too deep in Missouri. It's not going to happen. Did something come to your mind since then? No, I'm going on, on to my underreported because okay, it makes go me to that so thing. mad. I'm going to stop. Okay, go on. Health related. It is underreported. This has been a slow drip. The assault on women's rights and mm. health rights in the state of Missouri. But I'm also going to throw into that conversation the overall health of women and children in the state of Missouri. If you look at almost every list, we're not Mississippi, but we're knocking at the door. And that is something for everyone's health that we have to um, pay much more attention to. That, in the that was Dana Wright's most underreported right. story. Eric Wesson, your most underreported story of 2019. Police shootings of citizens. Uh, there's a lot of them. They uh, manipulate the system some kind of way. We're taking it to the grand jury. Nobody ever gets indicted or stands trial for it. Steve. Nick, the sorry state of mental health care in both our states. Just today, the Star reported about problems at Osawatomie State Hospital uh, in Kansas. Big problems there. Uh, I talked to too many people who are suffering from one mental illness or another who can't get the help they need when they need it. It's a big issue. Uh, I said the transformation of Overland Park, Kansas. I grew up in Overland Park, used to cruise Metcalf mm -hmm. when I was a kid, <laughs> uh, uh, which was, I think, back in the Model T days, as I recall. But if you look at Metcalf today, uh, you know, high rise apartments, retail, people living in the downtown area, and Overland Park handing out incentives like the Brook Ridge Country Club proposal, uh, just like Kansas City, Missouri. So the transformation of that sleepy suburban community into something else was probably not focused on enough in 2019. Steve Kroski, our next That's section right. is called Pick a Gift. It sounds simple enough. You are responsible for giving a gift to one metro area public figure this holiday season. But who would receive the gift? And when he or she hastily breaks open that wrapping paper, what would the gift be? I'm going to give my gift to Mayor Quentin Lucas. It's going to be a trip to the Bahamas for three weeks, Nick, to give the man some time to think. As it's been reported here and mentioned, he is everywhere all the time in this town. He needs to slow down. He Really smart guy, needs to think about steps the steps ahead and figure that out. Dana Wright. Uh, I would like to give the gift of a better justice system to everyone in our metropolitan area. We would be remiss if we did not mention that Ricky Kidd was freed this mm -hmm. year after 23 years, wrongfully convicted. When those men and women get back out, they are given nothing. Yes. They get much, much more uh, as far as services, uh, meals, education, when they are locked up when they shouldn't be locked up than they are once one. they mm -hmm. are released. Yes, excellent. Eric. Patrick Mahone, I would like to give him an offensive line before he gets killed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he needed any more gifts. Dave Helling. Uh, by the way, let me mention quickly, Ricky Kate had a public defender, and we did a series of stories on the problems in that office. That deserves some mention, too. No, I wrote down, <laughs> this is self-serving as hell, but what the hell? Uh, digital subscription to the Kansas City Star for everyone <laughs> in the community Aww. and I said that because <laughs> 2020 will bring, uh, bring big changes to your local newspaper. We're going to stop Saturday publication. The nature of journalism is changing so dramatically. We're doing our best but we're going to need some help and we're going to need people who pay for it. So that's my gift to everyone. By the way, we have viewers. We asked these exact same questions and, and you've answered almost everyone except for Valerie who when she said the top newsmaker of the year was Troy Schulte and his name never was mentioned at any point in time. It was on my list, but it came in third. <laughs> okay, it came in third. So, Valerie, we've tried to answer it for you. A lot of others, thank you for contributing to that. Uh, and most of those have been answered by our panelists. Let's look now to this brand start of a brand spanking new year. Dana Wright complete this sentence. I don't own a crystal ball, but if I did, this is what I'd see happening in our metro in 20. 20. Man, I want a downtown ballpark, and I know that's not a popular answer, but build it, baby, build it. I go to cities all over the country, and they all have these great, cool places right where the action is. 
I want that here, and I know that is an extraordinarily unpopular opinion, but there you have it. Not right. that unpopular. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at him rolling I'm his like eyes that. at me. Yeah. Uh, that there's not going to be a ballpark downtown <laughs> yeah. in Kansas City Boom. until they get through with the Jackson County contract. I believe it's some 23. They got to do something with that contract there, so that probably is not going to happen. Dave, two predictions. First, the presidential race will exhaust all of us. <laughs> there will be accusations, charges, lies, dramatic developments. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the most un-uplifting campaign maybe in my lifetime. And then also there will be an attempt to repeal Clean Missouri. That's the ethics reform package that voters approved uh, in the last general election. Republicans really don't like it. They'll put something else on the ballot in 2020. And by the way, I think Missourians will reject it and keep Clean Missouri in I place. I think so too. Steve. The federal government will give Kansas City money to extend the streetcar line, Nick, from Union Station out to UMKC. It'll be a huge uh, benefit to the community. It's going to happen in 2020. These are the predictions of our panelists. How much are these predictions worth, by the way? We took a look back <laughs> Here we go. at what oh, our boy. panelists said on last <laughs> year's said show. Year Were they right? Okay. You be the judge. Uh, construction at the airport will begin in 2019. I think this Kansas City streetcar system will in fact get the federal money it needs to begin construction on the extension out to the Country Club uh, Plaza. Yeah. True or false, Jolie Justice is elected the new mayor of Kansas City. True. Kansas Senator Pat Roberts announces he will not seek re-election. False. I think he'll wander out in a couple weeks and go, you know what, I've got another six years in now. <laughs> True or false, on February 3rd, the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. True. 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 Don't true. say Let's true. Do it. true. True. No golf. I don't want him to say true. It's true. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so there you have it. How much weight should we place on our panelists' crystal ball gazing then for 2020? It's always redeeming to start with a presumption of good faith. So let's head next to our lightning fast true or false round before the buzzer blows. True or false, in 2020, new Royals owner John Sherman agrees to consider a downtown ballpark. False. false. It won't happen false. in 2020. That's what you wanted. True. That's what you said. Okay. True. No, you remember false. that next year. It's false. false. In fact, I've been told he's really lukewarm about this idea because people will want him to help pay, pay for, for it. it. And he just spent a billion dollars to buy the team, doesn't have a lot of cash. He sounded lukewarm million. on the radio yesterday. Yeah. 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 I, I, that, so that's not a 2020? Well, I don't think he'll make a decision in 2020, but I think he's willing to look at the idea. We've we got to make Kraske come back until they get the money for the streetcar every year. Yes. Okay, until 2028, I promise. Right. True happen this or year. false, Sprint <laughs> Center is renamed following the wireless company's merger with T-Mobile. True. Has to happen. You, that means there has to be a merger in 2020. It's going to happen think in it's 2020. Happen? Yeah. Uh, I think it's probably he's probably right that there will be Not some probably. change if the merger is completed because there are still legal yeah. challenges to it. We'll see what happens. What would be it be renamed? There's already a T-Mobile uh, arena. If uh, it's going to be renamed no longer the Sprint Center Arena. Yeah, <laughs> former the, the arena formerly known as Sprint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True or false? Alicia Kennedy is named KCMO's new city manager. False. 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 Sure. Okay, false. who is named then? You, no, nobody mentioned that earlier in the show. No, I think the mayor is uh, intent on hiring a woman, if possible, and an African American woman, if possible. But I don't think Alicia Kennedy is it. I, I, I don't either. That, that's based on some information. I think you have to have some financial background to be able to do that, and I don't think that she has it, even though she has the educational requirement. I think you have to have some type of management and administrative degree and financial background. And by the way, the reason it. Troy Schulte was a winner in 2019 is not just because he left, but because he got a job at the job. county <laughs> that paid him exactly, exactly the same, same amount, amount of money. money. Yeah. That's a pretty yeah. good deal. <laughs> well, well, you know, when we just came out of a year where we had Jolie Justice and then Alicia Kennedy both losing that election, what, what is their future in 2020? Uh, Alicia's got a law firm. She's doing that. She's on TIFF. So she'll probably parlay that into some other things. I think she's a TIF chairman. I think it's so been surprising to me that Jolie that. Justice has really not, has really gone a bit into hiding. She's a lawyer as well. I think she has a political future. She was very, very upset with the outcome of the election based on conversations with her friends and very surprised by it too. But I think she has a future here.
I agree, true. but she, when you get beat that badly, yep. you got to yep. go hide so for a while. All yeah. right, true or false, on February 2nd, the Chiefs win the Super Bowl at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. True. 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 False. True. True. false. false. Okay. True. Data, you have to say Come something. True. 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 Okay. True. Yeah. Yeah. You do go back on these predictions. Yeah. You know that. They're coming back. All right. Baltimore True. has way too many weapons. They got Lamar's they number. They beat Baltimore. That was early in the well, season. Well, who cares? Look at Baltimore. They clicking on all cylinders. True or false, Mike Pompeo is elected United States Senator for Kansas. False. True. False. True. Okay, but False. he hasn't even got in the race yet. Yes, right? correct. Well, but he looks like he's going to get in the race. He's going to be the best known Republican in a state that always elects Republicans to the U.S. Senate, Nick. We haven't elected a Democrat to the even, Senate even though, since 1932. Even though Barbara Bollier <laughs> is now that candidate and everyone is coalescing around her? Mike Pompeo will win. Mike Pompeo's role in the Ukrainian disaster has not been fully reported yet. When it is, he'll be in trouble. It's not going to stop him in Kansas. True or false, Sharice Davids loses re-election bid for Kansas' 3rd Congressional District. False. 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 I think she'll false. win again. Yeah. 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 And particularly, uh, particularly in a Trump year when I think yes. the turnout will be higher, particularly in Johnson County where she did well, I think she's going to get re-elected. She is most vulnerable now. Uh, but the fact that she voted for impeachment suggests she's pretty confident in her Donald position. Trump is and not popular in the good, third district of Kansas. Not. But no. a lot can happen campaign. between now and November. Well, of course. Who yeah, would be the Republican nominee? I don't know. I don't know yet. Dana Wright. I was going to say, if, if they don't know, Senator I sure as heck don't know. Yeah. Well, if they've had nothing right. to know, no, I don't no, no. know. Well, I mean, I think we haven't seen the campaign. <laughs> there are quality <laughs> candidates on the Republican side of the field. Uh, Adrian Foster, I think, is correct. Amanda Susan Adkins Winter, is a Marin former Adkins. Republican so Party chair there, there in Kansas. There are quality she, candidates, but we don't know how they're going to separate themselves yet. We do know they're all women, which is fascinating. But isn't because it cons Republicans think they need women to win in the suburbs. Isn't it conceivable that somebody else can still get in that race? I remember when Sherry Davids was running. She didn't get into the race until almost the Valentine's Day of that year. We could still have somebody else come up uh, who was a huge name, uh, including Kevin Yoda, potentially. Right. No, I think we don't know the entire field yet. I do think the Republican Republican Party thinks that the way to prevail in the suburbs is to nominate women. There may be some other folks step forward. Well, they're, they're running against a woman, so they want right. to nominate a woman. All right, Dana Wright has name recognition. Yes, she does. True or false, Bill Self departs KU for the NBA. True. Oh, yes. False. True. True. You think that's going to happen? I think the program is in more trouble than we think it is, and I think he'll say, who needs this? The NCAA is too jacked up. I'm out of here. I didn't hear David Helling's response to that. I think that's true. I do think that the Jayhawk program is going to face some real scrutiny that will make it difficult for them to appear in the postseason in subsequent years, and I think uh, at that point, Bill Self will go, heck, I can make Why any college coach would want to put up with the NCAA anymore, I don't NBA know. NBA is a lot different than the uh, college. College, you get to recruit, you get to mold things, and the NBA, you're dealing with a bunch of grown multi-millionaires that don't do care. All righty, we are out of time. Ah. That's my buzzer, look. Yeah. Buzz, buzz, buzz. <laughs> Thank you buzz. for being such buzz. terrific guests. She is 50% of Dana and Parks. We days from 2 to 6 on 98.1 KMBZ. Dana Wright, thank you so much. Uh, and from the Kansas City Star, Dave Helling, always on call from the Kansas City Call, Eric Wesson, and Mr. Up to Date, weekdays on 11 on KCURFM, Steve Kraske. And I'm Nick Haynes, your host from all of us here at KCPT, where we're decking the halls with boughs of holly. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. We'll see you in the new year. And because some people get upset if I don't say it, thanks for spending part of your weekend with us.